All right, welcome back everybody to another episode of Ask the Skinny Guy Savior. We got more questions from you. So this first question is from Jamie Hobdell. He says, hey Vince, my question is, there different, is there a difference between choosing BCAs versus EAAs? Second being um, essential amino acids, both in powder form. So I guess in protein form he's referring to, uh, protein powder form, for losing weight. Everyone recommends BCAs, but the EAAs have a more complete amino profile versus the profile content of BCAs. Both are similar money and I opted for the EAAs last time as it made sense to have the complete amino profile, but have pondered this and wondered if there's a particular reason to opt for BCAs like better synergistic effect in the case of fat loss. Um, I've Googled the problem, but can't find a definitive answer. Is, uh, is there, if at all, there is one. All the best, Jamie from London. So. Great question, Jamie. I'd be happy to answer this, and I know this question has resulted in way more confusion than necessary. Uh, this whole topic of BCAs versus protein versus food, in my opinion, is something I would lump into the box of majoring in the minors. It's really something that I personally only discuss with my physique athletes, guys who are working towards a deadline and who are looking to compete against other physiques on stage, and they're looking for a bit of an edge. So, at the end of this question, I'll even share some of my personal experience because I've had 10 years of using BCAs and not using BCAs with multiple transformations. So I can tell you how I feel, how I've looked, and uh, I've been able to confidently come to a personal conclusion of my own, which I'll share in a minute. Um, in terms of Google searching the problem, the one guy you definitely want to Google search is Lane Norton. Uh, Lane Norton has done tons. Just type in Lane Norton BCAs and I'm uh, branch chain amino acids, and you'll find a ton of uh, info that he he has shared with the bodybuilding community. He's studied this as his PhD, uh, not BCA specifically, but I think protein as a whole. And he's really, really opened our eyes up to a lot of things that we thought to be true but aren't. And uh, he touches a lot on branch chain amino acid supplementation. So he's the guy you want to definitely read up on. Uh, but I'll share just a few things from what I've understood to be true about this topic. The main difference between, uh, you know, getting your uh, amino, essential amino acids from protein powder and BCAs is that BCAs particularly, um, specifically leucine within the three, is responsible for protein synthesis, which is the synthesis, which is the creation of new muscle tissue. So those, the, the other substrates aren't. Those are the ones that are responsible for stimulating new muscle tissue. So that's why we take BCAs. The main difference is the rate that our body receives them and reacts to them, all right? So if everybody out there who says BCAs are a waste, I get my BCAs from my protein powder, you do, you're absolutely right, but I get mine one step faster than you. That's the only difference. I get them faster than you. I'm one step ahead of you. So when you're relying on your BCAs from protein powder or whole food, your body has to liberate those. They have to break them down and they have to be released into your bloodstream, first through digestion and then absorption and then uh, your body gets them. So you have to just understand, you have to basically ask yourself, how important is, is it for me to stimulate protein synthesis right away? If you're a physique athlete, it's very important. If you're getting really lean and you need to save all your muscle tissue, we want to stimulate protein synthesis right away. And that's where BCA supplementation becomes really popular for you know physique athletes who are cutting, who are in low calories, uh, where I believe most of the benefits lie. Uh, that's where I primarily use them the most. And that's probably the biggest benefit. You're simply getting them faster. And I mean, we could do a whole, whole, whole topic on this one section here, but I would recommend the next time you invest some money in this one or two of these products, just get branched chain amino acids and you'll, uh, you'll experience, well I can't tell you what you'll experience because I don't know everything that's going on in your life, but what I experienced is as I got leaner, I experienced less muscle soreness, I was able to stay leaner longer when I took branched chain amino acids and I had more energy. That's it. And there's nothing more to it. It, was, it wasn't any sexier than that. So if you want to try them out, uh, give them a go um, and monitor it. See how your body feels. But I think you'll experience some of the similar things I did. 
So yeah, we, if you guys have any more questions on branched chain amino acids, feel free to leave them below. Uh, again, this is obviously a big topic, but you know, again, don't sweat it guys. This isn't something you need to lose sleep over. You need to first make sure you're getting all your daily protein needs, you're getting your carbs, you're getting your, your fats. And you, you got to look at this from a bigger picture perspective, you know, and, and, and you know, BCAs are great. We, you know, I've, I use them. I recommend to the people I mentioned earlier on to use them and you know, it's great, but I know there's a lot of people out there that are thinking, well, I can't afford them. Am I missing out? Am I, am I not going to achieve my goals? No, no, not true. Uh, I mean, if you look at some of the greatest bodybuilders through the 50s and 60s, I mean, I don't think Arnold ever took BCAs. <laughs> at least I never heard about him, Franco Colombo and all these great bodybuilders years ago. I, I don't think they had access to a lot of these supplements, yet they had phenomenal physique. So, uh, you know, rest assured, you have all the tools that you need, no matter what your situation is available to you. And this is just one small piece of the puzzle. That's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? It's such a small piece of the puzzle. You could still post the puzzle up on the wall and it would look great. And there'd be just a little small piece missing. You wouldn't even notice it unless you looked really carefully. See what I'm saying? That's kind of how I look at a lot of things um, that, you know, some people tend to stress out about unnecessarily. So let's just leave this episode at one question. I went along, uh, I went a little while on that one, but I knew that would be a hot topic. So um, I thought I'd give it a little extra time. So uh, thanks for asking the question, Jamie, and to anybody else who's curious about that, uh, feel free to leave comments, questions below, and um, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.